So, uh, sitting at a computer and typing code uh, seems like doesn't seem like really the reason why designers got into the field in the first place. So, having said that, was it difficult for either of you to make the transition from print to digital? For me, it felt kind of like a natural or necessary transition. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why. Um, the point at which I felt like I needed to make the transition was really um, uh, one where I was designing user manuals mm -hmm. and um, I was designing user manuals for things like washing machines and telephones and things like that. Designing a user manual where you're thinking about the text and step-by-step -step instructions and put, pairing illustrations with text um, is not unlike some of the things I was doing when I transferred those skills to being an information architect. Mm -hmm. um, when I started um, sort of like locking those skills into sort of just a print user manual and then I discovered that I could sort of transfer some of those skills online. I wasn't thinking about typing necessarily. I was just thinking about how interesting it was that those are transferable skills. Mm -hmm. So it was less about the tool mm -hmm. and more about how I could reach audiences with this new media. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Chase? Yes. I, uh, <laughs> I actually think that, um, I don't know, as, the, as the, the sort of the profession progresses that you, you get more and more of these these glimpses into you know the behind the scenes of how something is made. I mean, there was a time when you were a designer and you would actually send something out to be composited, and someone else would set the type mm -hmm. and you know actually put all the pieces together for you. And now, I mean, just as much as you would say when you wanted to be a designer, you wouldn't want to sit down and code all day. Maybe some of those designers wouldn't want to sit there and like kern type and mm -hmm. and set all that all day. Mm -hmm. Maybe not. Um, but I think part of this um, goes along with like having more control over the things that you make. Like I love to code, and I love that I can see, you know, the inner workings of all the the websites that I make because mm -hmm. of that, and it makes me that much more knowledgeable of how these things come together and how they work. Mm -hmm. And I think that that makes me a better designer. Mm -hmm. Given uh, the ever-growing number of web languages sought after by potential employers, mm -hmm. um, where do you recommend designers begin their digital education? At SBA, <laughs> is that a fair answer? No, um, that's a really good question and one that I will pose to the panel um, when we <laughs> when when we get started. Uh -huh. um, I don't think that so when you're talking about digital education, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily think that that has to mean that they necessarily need to code. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that you know digital designers or people that are involved with interaction design or interactive media should be proficient in one programming language or one language that allows them to be independent, mm -hmm. that allows them to sort of get their idea across such that they don't have to depend on someone else to prototype an idea, to sort of communicate an idea. Um, where they get started with understanding that is up to them. It depends on what sort of media they want to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, and schools are a good place for that. Workshops are a good place for that. Um, online sites are a good place for that. We're going to, in this workshop, actually put forth a number of links and references that give people a good place to start. Mm -hmm. um, Jason might be a good place to start. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I think it, it sort of depends on on what environment you're working in. If you're working up as a part of a large team, you might have many people who have, uh, you know, sort of very specific disciplines. Like they might know a specific kind of language and you might be just the designer or, or anything like that. Um, whereas on a small team, you might be juggling a lot more things. And I, I, I think with that in mind, I, I kind of, I, I agree with Liz where it's good to know at least one language. And I mm -hmm. think you could even broaden it out to that as just sort of understanding programming principles mm -hmm. because um, I, I, I don't think it's necessarily realistic to, to pursue design in any sort of really meaningful way and also pursue programming in mm -hmm. a very meaningful way. There just isn't enough time in the day. So you're always going to be working with people who are specialists in different fields than you are, just as you're a specialist in design. Mm -hmm. um, but you need to be able to, to talk with them and understand what you're asking of them. If you're asking them to build you a website in a particular way, you need to be able to speak to them and, and sort of understand what it is that you're, you're tasking them with. Right, I mean, if you're, if you're going to follow a recipe um, and bake, cookies, for example, right? You wouldn't, in order to do that, you don't need to understand 
how the chocolate chips were made. You don't need to understand how the oven you know, works necessarily. You need to understand the language of the recipe, the mm -hmm. language of the food, the mm -hmm. ingredients, and mm -hmm. how to sort of put it all together enough to sort of communicate with the different people. But it's more like you want sort of a T-shaped mm -hmm. designer and sort of one programming language with broad understanding of, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. many, I would say. That's good. <clears throat> How does having a print background help or hinder a uh, designer moving from print to digital? I come from a print background, uh -huh. and I think it's, it's only been advantageous. Um, part of it is not so much just having a print background, but just having a traditional design background. Mm -hmm. A lot of the, the sort of web design programs don't teach traditional graphic design. Um, and so, so, so much is uh, unparalleled with uh, interaction design and, and web design in general um, that comes from traditional graphic design principles. Mm -hmm. So I think having that sort of knowledge and that sort of education uh, is only advantageous. Um, I think it's sort of similar to knowing where the knowing where the baseline is and how to how to sort of deviate from it in that or in that or sort of a parallel is um, when you growing up you go to grammar school and you learn the rules of um, language and grammar um, sort of correct Jason's grammar a lot I guess that's the way he's smiling so um, and and so you learn certain rules and constructive constructions and when you continue on in your life you then learn and unlearn those constructions but if you've never learned them in the first place then you wouldn't know sort of how to deviate from them and I think that's where um, a print background comes in really useful sort of in thinking about digital media. If you have that background, you sort of understand the baseline and the foundation and a very rich legacy. But if you never had that, then you sort of don't know how you can deviate from it, how you can build on it, where that rich legacy um, comes from, the mm -hmm. same way that you can sort of break sentence constructions and dangling participles. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, do you feel that design education needs like an extreme makeover now, given uh, a lot of the changes in the field recently? Design education extreme, that's a, that's a really good idea for a show that I might steal. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, yes and no. Um, I, given, um, if for, for more reasons than I think just what we're experiencing in the field, I mean, 1997 we saw the introduction of the iPhone this Saturday we'll see the introduction of the iPad. Um, all of these things introduced sort of the um, need for new ways to think about design. And um, design education, I think for a long time, has actually needed a bit of a extreme makeover. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, I think um, these two events um, have people sort of turning up in droves asking questions like, what do I need? Where, where should I go? And there are you know, more and more resources for it, but um, design education could certainly use um, a bit of a makeover, and I think people are creating their own events and workshops to sort of mitigate that in the meantime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would actually be curious to see what even a curriculum like that would look like. I know, I mean, when, when I graduated from design school, just traditional graphic design, I was still an idiot, I mean, mm -hmm. when it came to design. I was still really, really green, and I can't imagine how to also cram in something like um, what's really becoming like a very, very rich medium of web design, you know, with its own principles and its own ideals, how to cram that inside of that as well and, and come away with any sort of meaningful expertise. I, 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 don't, I don't know where that balance lies yet. That said, mm -hmm. there, there are schools and programs um, all around this country and countries um, abroad outside the United States that are doing just amazing work mm -hmm. in sort of addressing these these kinds of needs already. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, it has in some places been formalized into a curriculum, and in other places it's just sort of part of the, the ongoing um, classes that are offered. Mm -hmm. So it's not to say that it's not being addressed um, right now, but just if we talk about design, as you asked the question, design education as mm -hmm. a whole, mm -hmm. it's not being, um, it's not sort of part of that. That's true too, is that it's, it's probably, I mean, I brought up web design, but it's probably not even fair to, at this point, Make you it know, so structure a curriculum yeah. around web design. I mean, even that is going to, to seem, you know, really, really limiting and, you know, as, as the coming years mm -hmm. go by. I mean, design is going to be so much more broad as far as interaction goes.